Hello, I'm Tim Carter. Says that I'm live. What happens at my end, just so you know, when you click the go live button, you're not live right away. It, there's like a, about a three to four second delay and the screen's kind of shadowed. And it says going live, going live. Then all of a sudden it says you're live, but the screen is not bright. So I always wonder, I always wonder, did that, um, am I really live when they say so? I sometimes go back and watch and it, they're pretty accurate, right? When it says live is when the video starts, um, if, if, you, if you watch it afterwards. I am Tim Carter, in case you're wondering, and this is Ask the Builder, and I'm glad you're here. <laughs> Josh, Josh did not bring a pizza. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, my gosh. The um, I'm going to wait till a few more people come around at, at, before we start talking about the uh, cheap DIY sheds. Uh, so if you're watching this in the future, <laughs> um, don't don't get all don't get your panties in a what twist, you know, um, <laughs> you, know, don't, you know, just what happens. I'd like to get more people here and and uh, th then we start to talk about the main topic uh, I to fill the space. Uh, just so you know, if you if you've just come on the live stream, uh, the the rule that I have, well, it's it's not a rule; it's a, it's just a recommendation. It would really be nice if you checked in. Uh, I'm not going to stalk you. I just like to know who's here, and what's more important is I like to know your superpowers. In other words, what is your superpower? Uh, so because you may be able to help in a conversation, and I may have a question for you. So that's why it's important to uh, identify who you are. Uh, oh, that's really interesting. You have to watch a few seconds of a commercial. Well, that doesn't make, I mean, that doesn't surprise me. That's how Google and YouTube funds everything. Um, in the last hour, I did two uh, of my paid phone consults. Very interesting. Uh, oh, hi, Justin. Thank you for checking in. Uh, make sure you show, tell me what your superpower is. And, you know, what you're good at, maybe what you do for a living, you know, whatever you can share. I'm not trying to pry. I just want to know if there's something that that is allied to what we talk about here, where you may be able to, uh, where you may be the expert. Simple as that. The uh, Hi, Steve. Happy Thursday. Um, so I did two phone consults. They were both very interesting. I'll, I just want to talk about it really quickly. And then we're going to talk about the sheds, cheap sheds. The... Um, the first one was a woman, a mom that I talked to um, back in the fall. And really, it, it was such a great phone call. And um, this woman, I told the story. I may have actually told the story on one of my first live streams. I can't remember, but I think I did. And th this, is a, this is a woman who lives in Schenectady, New York. She... She she she's got an unfinished attic up in this house she lives in. She's married and she uh, has got kids, and she decided to turn it into like a playroom. But she she needed a dormer, and um, so she tried to contact remodelers and she connected in New York, and they all basically told her to to go to hell. <laughs> they were too busy. They didn't care. They didn't want to help her. So she got, you know, the old saying, "Hell hath no scurry," like that story. Hell hath no fury like that of a scorned woman. Well, I think that not only has to do with, with, with infidelity, but, but I think it has to do with construction too. <laughs> so, so this woman, God bless her. I swear to God, God, and her name, her name, by the way, is Angel. All right. I mean, it's, it's serendipity. She goes to hell with them. I'm going to do the damn thing myself. So she starts researching it, and she comes across me somehow. I don't, I don't know. So she does this paid phone call back in the fall, and uh, we actually did uh, thirty minutes, you know. And she's very, you know, paid right away. Blah blah blah. She was so happy. She she was like, um, because I didn't tell her she couldn't do it. I just I was very very honest. I said this is not going to be easy. There's going to be some tough parts, but luckily there's a lot of videos on YouTube that you're going to be watching that will get you through some of these tough spots. Plus, I'm your lifeline. 
you know, in other words. So she said, oh, this is awesome. I'm going to get started next week. <laughs> I said, no, 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 no. You are not going to get started next week. I mean, it was getting really close up to where, I mean, if you know anything about Schenectady, New York, I mean, Lake Effect snows. I mean, I said, Angel, I said, it's good. your roof could have 18 inches of snow on it soon. So I said, you got to wait till spring. So she waited. And so she decided she had to have some questions answered today. And um, so I, I helped her out. She had really good questions. God bless her. I, I, I know this sounds crazy. I, I kept her phone number. I'm, I, I may, if I go, I can tell you this. If I have to go back to Cincinnati, I am going to stop by and visit this woman. I mean, I'll get her permission first, but I, I want to stop by and meet her. I swear. <laughs> and then I did this other one um, where uh, this person's building a really steep roof uh, for a cabin and he needed to know how to, how to build it and how to make all the connections and all the lumber. And he almost made a grave mistake. Oh my gosh. He almost used the wrong lumber. Oh, he was going to use spruce pine, spruce pine fir for the rafters. I said, no, no flipping way, man. You have got to find Southern yellow pine. You have got to get you Southern yellow pine. So I, so right there alone, I saved him. All right. Um, remember if you're here, if you're, Look, look over in the chat and look what your fellow viewers have done. Your fellow viewers have checked in. Some of them have not listed their superpowers. All right. All right. I'm, I keep hammering superpowers. I want to know what your superpower is. All right. My superpower, one of them is I can talk for like an hour and a half. <laughs> Sometimes I can go off the rails. All right. All right. Um, so I'm going to... Um, really quickly at the comments, and then we're going to jump into cheap DIY sheds. Um, I use uh, the free YouTube account, though. I If I had a paid account, I see, I get it. I, I got it. Checking in. Okay. Hello, John from Andrew, uh, Omaha, Nebraska. Great. All right. All right. Good. Once again, I need you to please don't be bashful. Tell me what your superpowers are. And what I mean by that, come on, is um, what are you really good at? You know, what 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 skills do you have? You don't have to list 50 of them, but you might have a skill that I need help with. That's why I'm asking. Cheap DIY sheds. You'd be surprised how many people want to know about this topic. And I thought it was a really interesting thing to talk about. And I'll tell you why. Because I know I you if you if you paid attention to this live stream over the next past two months. You know that I keep hammering this whole thing about inflation. And I predicted, I said months ago, what was going to happen. And it came true. And I also made a prediction just last week that the inflation is going to be a lot worse. I there, there was, um, I just saw a news item today, for example, fertilizer. The cost of fertilizer for farmers is up 300%. What do you think that's going to do to all food costs? All right. Because inflation is high, and if you have a limited income, I get it. You've only got so much money to, um, to spend on a shed. The trouble is, the trouble is, I, if you have to build a cheap one, I, I, I get it. Um, I, I do get I do understand it. But it, here's, here's the point. Sometimes you just have to spend a little bit more money to get a pretty decent shed. All right. Does it doesn't you don't have to break the bank. And 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 all and and the difference is might just be it it could just be a couple of hundred bucks, you know, to it, it, when you actually compare the materials. And 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 you might have here, here's here's what's happening behind that door. I've been putting this off for like five years. I've just, I keep making excuses, but I decided a month ago, this is the year. I, I, I have to walk through the garage at it on the other side of this door. And there's all kinds of clutter there. And there's all kinds of clutter down in the garage. And I thought, th I, I just got fed up with it about a month ago. And I said, I'm done with it. And I'm either going to give it away we have a free room at our dump, or I'm going to sell it. I've, I've had great luck selling stuff both on Craigslist and on, there are all these yard sale groups 
on Facebook. Or, I mean, fascist book. I'm sorry. So I'll, I'll open up a ghost account on fascist book just to sell stuff. The point I'm trying to make for you is I'll bet you, I swear, I'll bet you at your home, in your garage, in your attic, in your basement, you have got a bunch of crap that you don't use anymore. You walk past it just like I do. And I, I know you may think this is crazy. People will buy it. People will buy it. And so you only get five or ten dollars or fifteen bucks for each thing. All of a sudden, you've got three, four, five hundred bucks. That three or four, five hundred dollars can make the difference between building a cheap DIY shed and one that's halfway decent. So, you know, there, there's there's an old saying that that the junk dealers, um, you know, that the the scrap dealers, um, you know, that many of them are very wealthy because they have an old saying: they they turn shit into gold. That's their saying, turn shit into gold. In other words, people, scra it's scrap metal. I mean, it, people just like throw it away. And they're they're like, we'll take it, we'll take it. You know, and so they give you, I don't know, 10 cents a pound for whatever. And then they turn around and sell it for 50 cents a pound or whatever. I, I mean, most scrap dealers are, are very, very wealthy. All right. Um, uh, super power holding life. <laughs> <laughs> well, holding back, laughing on the golf course. Okay, okay, Mr. Uh, great Golfer Man. Well, I swear to God, as soon as you hit your first bad drive, I'm going to start cracking up laughing. Bob has signed in three times. All right, here we go. Here's our good question. This might be shed related. John says, I, hi, Tim. Uh, years ago, I prepped and poured a 20 by 48 pad. That's pretty big. 48 PSI concrete rebar. I want to put a building. Some suggest I need to put poles. Is it a pole bar? But can I build? You can, you should be able, where, where's the pad at? Where is this? Uh, I need to know where it is. Like, are you, is it, um, is it in Key West, Florida? Is it in um, International Falls, Minnesota? You know, so tell me where it is. Well, or just give me a state if you don't want to give away where, where you live. All right. I get that. I don't want to be too probing. Just give me a state. Um, because where you live depends on what the answer is. <clears throat> there could be a, I think that there's a, I think the chat is, is slow today. Um, okay. Frederick, Maryland. All right. So the problem is, here's the problem. Um, the problem is this. How, how thick is the slab? Tell me how thick it is. On farm property, okay? That's a big help, but I don't want you to make a mistake. Tell me how thick the slab is. Just waiting. I'm waiting for John to tell me how thick the slab is. I know that six inches. Okay. Well, um, you know, the weight of the walls and the weight of the roof, it's a lot of weight. All right. And you do have, um, Bill, okay, you do have a, um, a little bit of a frost situation there. All right. I mean, not like New Hampshire, but I'll bet you your frost depth is 18 inches would be just a rough guess for Frederick, Maryland. And... Why no wire me bar? I got it. That's good for that. That's that's good. You built you sounds like you did everything right. But the trouble is when you do the calculation, in other words, if you're gonna just build a standard like building, like a where's the flipping whiteboard? Tell you what, I I swear to God, I'm gonna go get that whiteboard tomorrow. All right, if you're building a building like this, all right, just a simple building, you know, with a regular gable roof, all right? So you're going to have on these walls here, you start to add up the weight of everything, the weight of the walls, the weight of the roof, 
all the framing lumber, all the framing lumber, all of the roofing, any he wet, heavy snow you get, you'd be pretty stunned how much weight there is. You'd be pretty stunned. Here's the good news. Um, I'll bet you the soil there is, um, the soil is um, pretty, pr pretty, a medium dense, a medium clay soil. Would I be right? A medium clay? <laughs> We've heard that story before. You know what? I, I'm not only am I going to go out in the morning to get it, as soon as I get it, I'm going to message you back on Discord. Okay, good. You're not going to you're not going to like to hear what I have to say, John. If you're going to, here's the trouble. You know, if you get my newsletter at the bottom of every newsletter, it says do it right, not over. That's like my motto. So I know, Will, where's the flipping whiteboard? Just a second. I'm drawing this slab for, for John and what he's got to do. So here's the slab. This is not going to be easy, John. But, um, but it's going to... Um, it's going to work. All right. I mean, this is not going to be easy, but you can do it. All right. So here's your slab right now. And, you know, you've got soil coming all the way over here, you know, and the soil probably up to about here. I'm saying that you need you need to dig a, a, like a, I don't know, 16 inch down, which is not that far. Six inches wide. And unfortunately, you're going to have to dig out here, you know, to be able to get to that. And once you have this excavated. Then you can put like a form board here and you can then pour, you can, you can mix up some bag concrete or whatever, and you can pour this. And if you pour it really stiff, you can pack the concrete up underneath here, or you can come back and grout this later. All right. In other words, if, if you end up, In other words, it's going to be really hard to get the concrete to go all the way up. The concrete may have like a little thing. What the next day you can you can come back and pack this with cement and and you know uh, coarse sand, so that you have solid contact between this and this. All right. What I'm afraid of because I don't know how far the steel extended over to the edge. In other words. If your steel rebar that you've got in a slab did not all the way come over here, that concentrated load up here could crack off the corner of this slab. You know, so it's just, it's like, what a shame you didn't build a turn down slab at the very least. If you could, you could have just dug out, if you had you just done a turn down slab in that or along the edges of just 12 inches, you wouldn't have to do any of this, but oh well. So um, that's what I, that's that's what you that's what I would do along the two load bearing walls. So, what if he bought one of those metal frame carport type buildings? I wouldn't think there'd be um, maybe. Uh, but do you see how big that thing is? Twenty by forty eight. That's a big. That's a big building. I'm telling you. Hello, Vanessa. Glad you're here. Um, so, John, I don't know if that helped you. I mean, I know it's bad news. It's bad news. I'm just really worried about that concentrated load. That's a lot of weight along there. Well, you can do poles. You can do a pole building. You can do that, but you're just going to be digging piers. But, yeah, you could do a pole building. Um, and the other thing you could do is you could build the pole building on the slab, and then right where each pole is, 
do exactly what I said, but you don't have to do it all along the wall. You just have to dig a 12 inch round pier that would be, that would come up underneath the slab. So you could do poles, you could do a pole building on the slab. So that'll work. Um, Will Smith, at least you can save and take those pages you draw for future references. Maybe you do not want the whiteboard. No, no, I, I'm going to do the whiteboard. The whiteboard's a great idea. I like everything about the whiteboard. Um, I already have a copy of them on the video now, but the trouble is, is that it's really hard to remember where each drawing is on each live stream. So I don't, I don't, I don't need the drawing. Uh, yeah. All right, John. Yeah. And re just remember, if you get in trouble, you can um, just do one of my paid calls. Uh, I'm more than happy to help out. So if you have any other questions, um, happy to help. If you want to continue to talk about sheds, I love sheds. I've built a ton of them. Um, ask any questions you have about sheds over in the chat. Happy to answer them. I um, Back back in Cincinnati, I built a, uh, actually, it's the photograph uh, that's, that's the thumbnail for this live stream. I built this that shed, but, but which it's really funny. That shed just like it looks like it's kind of small. It's actually an L-shaped shed, and um, you can't see the other L around the corner. And be, and I matched it perfectly with our house. You know, it's just it, every and every detail. It, it's the same color. It's the same roof pitch. It's the it's the same overhang. Uh, it was a fun little project to build. Oh my gosh, it was fun. Um. Yeah. Dry erase paint on wall. Yeah, I've seen that. It's wonderful. It's a great idea. The dry erase paint. Um, it's a wonderful idea. Wonderful. In fact, it, what my we have it. We did the same thing down in the basement here at our house. And another thing we did. Um, my daughter did it back when she was here ten years ago. Did you know that they have a magnetic wall paint? I shouldn't say the paint's magnetic. The the wall paint. I th I. I may have this wrong. It's it's like the wall paint has got iron in it. And so magnets stick to the wall anywhere. It's kind of interesting. But I don't see how it could be iron in the paint because it would just rust in the water base. I, I have to, I'm going to have to look that up again. Uh, we had um, some really funky weather. So yesterday was gorgeous. If you remember, I went out and did ham radio with my buddy Jim. And overnight, some, you know, pesky, like wet, little wet snow. It never really accumulated on the ground. It's wet snow, some sleet. It's been, it's been nasty all day. You know, it's, it's just been a gray. It's, you know, old man winter around here in New Hampshire. You know, you know what he's like? Old man winter is like that friend of yours that comes over on a Saturday night. You know, back, remember when you were younger, you'd have some friend come over. And, and, you know, maybe you and your wife or your husband have been married just a couple of years and maybe you want to get a little romantic. Who knows what? And, and, and your friend, no social skills. He doesn't know when to leave. He doesn't know when to leave. You know, and you're dropping all kinds of hints. <laughs> so that's what old man winter's like in New Hampshire this time of year. He does not know when to leave. Like, get the hell out of here. <laughs> uh, Vanessa, my university did the math center wall so we could teach anyone. Yeah, Exactly. Yes, good idea. Yeah, yeah, I know you had you had this you had rain down there where you are in Connecticut. We've got this. It was kind of a it rained and a little bit of sleet, a little bit of snow. No, the driveway's clear. It just it just bull crap. Well, uh, wet golf? No way. See, like I would never golf in weather like this. You'd have to be nuts. I mean, but there are crazy people who golf and stuff. I mean, they're just crazy. You know. Oh, uh, it's um, it's my son's college where he went to school, Champlain. We bought this wonderful sweatshirt for him. It's green. It's like a hunter green. Be I mean, it must have cost 30 bucks back 15 years ago. Never wore it. <laughs> I find it up here on the other side of that door one day. I mean, I, I go, are you kidding me? I mean, it still had the freaking tag on it. I, I love hoodie sweatshirts. I love them, you know. I'm not a gangster, but um, maybe I look like um, Luke Skywalker, you know, or Obi-Wan, you know, whatever. Um, they're very warm in the wintertime. And today was just kind of that kind of a day. 
you know, a little chilly. All right. Um, oh, I'll play if I have to in the league, but come on. No, I'm not going to forfeit, man. They they don't. I'm not forfeiting. I'll uh, I'll play even if I have to use a baseball bat. I'll use a base. Did you ever read that story about that? Um, what do you call um, what do you call um, somebody? Um, I, I can't think of. I can't even describe it. Like somebody who's um, not a shyster, but a. Um, uh, you know, like a plant. I, I don't know. In other words, there was this guy out in Hollywood back in the 1930s who um, was this like, I don't want to call him a trick off, but he, he would bet that he would bet like Bing Crosby and these other people. He kind of hobnobbed with these people. And he said he, he would bet, him, you know, he would bet him on a golf course. Like, I, I'll beat you, but I'm not going to use golf clubs. Just let me use a baseball bat. He used a baseball bat, uh, I think a shovel. And he used the uh, rake for the uh, for for th th that you rake the the traps with. Those are the only three things he was allowed to use. He always beat everybody. <laughs> Golf shark, yeah, that's it. That's what I'm thinking. Shark, yes, flipping shark. He beat them all. No, so I mean, you'd be stunned how far you could hit a golf ball with a baseball bat. <laughs> My God. And then on the green, he would just lay down on the green and use the rake like a, a billiard. You know, the end of the rake and he would just, you know, hit it like a billiard ball. The story's online. I, I type in, like, type into YouTube uh, or, or Google Hollywood golf shark. You know, Bing Crosby. I, it, the story will come up. That that may be a story that you could pass around to your league, Will. Um, all right, um, Vanessa, two twelve by sixteen. That's a good size shed, Vanessa. Uh, been wearing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kathy, Kathy wears zipped hoodies. She loves them. Um, Steve, like when you bet someone in pool. Exactly, exactly. That's what I'm talking about. Exactly. You know this. I mean, it's it's a great story. I read it. I forget. I don't know why. What happened to it? It's a great, great story. All right. If you have any questions about sheds um, or any other thing about your home, uh, just go ahead and ask. It doesn't matter. I don't care what we what you type in. Um, I really don't. Um, what was it that I wanted to, uh, share? Um, all right. I, I didn't get it all done, but I got really close. I got really close to getting all the clutter done here in the, in the office. Um, but it really, it's really come together white. And I found some really cool things that I forgot about. Um, but tomorrow it's going to be awesome that I'm moving over there. So a hustler. Yes. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Exactly. Yes, hustler. That's exactly. Yeah, I don't know why I couldn't think. I guess because I've never done it before. I'm never not that good. I can't. I can't hustle anybody. <laughs> if it was an act, a pool player, he would let. We would let the pool hall when when our game when he played in trouble. <laughs> oh my gosh! I'll bet you've got some great stories. Oh my gosh. Um. Anyway, <laughs> that's a crutch word, right? Okay. Okay. Got it. The, um, um, so I told you yesterday, I was a little worried about the tomato plants because I had let them dry out. Well, they came back. I, I got, they came back. They look beautiful. They're, they're great. I'm in good shape. Uh, active duty spare times. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> eight bit vinyls, right? Shed is never big enough unless you can park a car in it. Yeah. Um, I have a really good video that shows how to size a shed. What I, You'd be stunned how many people, how many emails I get from people who go, oh, how can I enlarge my shed? I, I got it. I bought it. And it looked huge. It was empty. It looked huge. And all you have to do to, shed, to size a shed correctly, whatever you're going to put in the shed, go out on your driveway if it's level or partly level, go on your lawn. I don't care. And put everything on your lawn as if you, how you imagine it, it's going to be in the shed. I mean, they're like, you know, put the things as close together as you want to put them, um, you know, and, and make sure that you don't have one thing in front of another, you know, so that you can just walk in the shed and get what you need. And then just take some string and outline it. There you, that's how big your shed's got to be. Nothing about this is hard. 
uh, yeah, yeah, that, I, that yeah, you, you're dealing with the zoning code issue. Um, yeah, welcome. Come, move up to New Hampshire. Get get away from that. The People's Republic of Connecticut. Get out of there. Come up to New Hampshire. Uh, anyway. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, uh, what did I? Oh. So I'm going to, I can only tell you a little bit. This is the continuing story of my daughter who moved out to Long Beach. Today's Thursday. Um, on Tuesday, she gets a call from her, um, the woman that was in charge of the course. She had to take a eight week online course about how to be a flight attendant on a private jet. And then she had to go out to California for a week halfway through to, for some in-person training. It was all, almost all safety stuff, you know, like very important safety things about how to get out of the aircraft in, in a, if there's a problem, uh, water, water rescue. You know, they actually had to train in swimming pools. It was very interesting. The woman... Of course, the woman who runs this course, of course, is very well connected. And and all of the wealthy people know her. And a person, I'm sorry, the personal assistant of a person, I do not know who the person is, called her and said, we want to know who is your best person. If we 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 need we need we need a private my my boss needs a private flight attendant just for him. It could be a her. I don't know. And this woman says, well, I know. And they, they described what they want. And the woman said, stop. I know exactly who it's going to be. My daughter. And they said, we need to get her resume within the hour. So the woman calls my daughter, blah, blah, blah. Do it. Um, she gets a call yesterday from the assistant, hour long call and everything went really great. And, um, she, she's not allowed to tell anybody who the person is. It's, and she's got a, a in-person interview on Monday with the person and the assistant with, with the, this person, whoever it is. And um, if I told you what the sal the starting salary was, you you would fall out of your chair. I I predicted. I told my daughter two three months ago. I said I predicted that this would happen, but I did not think it would happen for about two years. You know that she would have to kind of get some um, experience and get her name out, and the word would leak out. But um, it's insane. If I told you, it's, I mean, it's so big, she can't even tell us who it is. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> I mean, I, I almost can't even comprehend it. I'll be honest with you. I almost cannot even comprehend it. <clears throat> I did some, we, my wife, my wife is Kathy. <laughs> Kathy is so intrigued. She spent the whole morning trying to figure out who this person is. <laughs> Because we got a few clues, but they're very vague. And I'm not going to give them to you. All right. So, so she's sending me some stuff. And she's, she then starts to look up. She, she's got this list who it might be. And, and I'm not going to tell you who it is. <laughs> and all I can tell you is some of the people on the list have got so much money. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm a numbers guy. I've always been a numbers guy. The, the, the least... The least wealthy person on the list, the least wealthy, makes a million dollars a week <laughs> just in interest and in, on their investments and stuff. <laughs> That's the least wealthy. One person on the list makes six million. 
a week and another person makes 43 million a week, a week. <laughs> uh, yeah, she gets her Carvana. She, she got approved. She gets the car. The car comes on Sunday. She's so excited. Um, she's so excited. <sighs> I'm so proud of her. She, I love her to death. Oh my gosh. All right, here we go. 8-Bit Vinyl. If you were unable to build larger per city regs. No. Boy, is that a good question. Oh. All right. So I used to, back in Cincinnati, um, I was an uh, elected official twice. Uh, I was up here in the Northeast. They call them selectmen. Even though if, if you're a woman, you, well, you'd be called a select woman. And But in Cincinnati in the Midwest, we call them councilmen. Uh, in other words, I, I was a town councilman. And but for the eight years prior to that, I, I sat on the zoning and planning board. So I heard all of the variances come through. So eight bit. If look in your zoning code, Commander, I'll bet you that a shed is considered an accessory building. It's not considered the primary building. All right. So accessory buildings have got a different set of regs, and they always are they're always smaller than the principal residence. For example, in the code, and for many, many years, and it's probably still accurate today, and it's because of a fire department thing of the, the, the height of the ladders that they have. You're not allowed to build a house over 35 feet, all right? The peak of the roof, not allowed to be over 35 feet. An accessory building, not allowed to be over 20 feet high. So don't think that you can just go as high as you want. Uh-uh. You'll, you'll, you'll be in for a surprise. So check your code as to the height that you're allowed to go. Vanessa, we had a similar training as five military. Yes. Yeah, I, I don't doubt it. Uh, Vanessa thinks is high. No, I, I disagree with you. I think, well, every zoning code is different. I think you'll be stunned to find that the accessory buildings, they don't want them to be as big as the principal residence for a host of reasons. No, 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 it's not. No, it was not Tom Brady. What happened is this is at a different place. Tom Brady, um, on Monday, this company that she started to work for, and she's only part time. So she has no trouble if she if she gets an offer on Monday, she'll she'll just tell the other people, um, I'm out of here. All right. So because they don't she's not hired full time. Tom Brady had come into that business and he had chartered a plane to take his wife and kids somewhere. So um, that's all. So she didn't get to talk to him. hes I'm sure he's a nice guy, you know, but everybody needs to realize that all of these celebrities and people, they put their, their pants on just the same way we do. I mean, you know, they get dressed the same way we do, all right? And, and I, I know I've talked about this before. Just... We all have problems. All of us have a set of problems. Some have more than others. When you get, if you make a lot of money, your problems don't go away. You still have problems. And actually, the problems are bigger, much bigger. So having a lot of money does not mean you have a problem-free life. So, all right. Um, Will says, train for that in the Navy, like in the movie, you know. Yeah, black out goggles and upside down was fun. I'll bet. Um, all right, um, ours is that the roof line cannot go over the house height. Yeah, well, you've got a very uh, you've got a very generous uh, zoning code that would allow an accessory building to be as high as a principal residence. That's you're lucky. Most are not that way. <laughs> Useless eater. <laughs> Good after, or actually, good evening. Good evening, Steve. <laughs> Hello, useless eaters. Yes. <laughs> that is funny. Oh, my gosh. That's funny. Oh. Oh, my gosh. That is so funny. I love that. When Kathy first told me that months ago, I just started cracking up laughing. 
<laughs> oh my gosh. Um, all right. No, I'm not a celebrity. I'm not a celebrity. I told Roko, we've been through this. I told you the test. Here's the test if you're a celebrity. The test is if you go out and you go to the grocery or you walk into Home Depot and you hear people go, hey, look, there's Roko. Look, there's Roko, you know, the, the TV star. You're a celebrity. <laughs> In my entire career of 28 years, it's only happened three times. <laughs> so I am not a celebrity. Um, all right. Um, <laughs> Vanessa says, at least this useless eater can make bread. Um, so Vanessa, you'll find this interesting. My grandfather, uh, he was a baker. And, um, and, and so was my grandmother. I never got to meet him. They passed away before I was born. And, but the building where their bakery was is still standing in Cincinnati, uh, Ohio. And um, I've got a photograph um, of, of my grandmother and two helpers and my, my aunt, my Aunt Clara, standing behind the counter. And the, the case is filled with all these pastries. Oh, my gosh. So I, um, I decided this past winter that I wanted to, you know, make my grandfather happy. And I wanted to make some bread from scratch. So my youngest daughter, who's out in California, she's a really good baker. And so um, I said, look, I want to do this. So would you show me how to do it? I mean, and I was stunned at how I, I was stunned at how hard it is, in my opinion, how hard it is to make bread. I mean, just there are like six or seven steps before you even can put it in the oven. It's like, are you kidding me? Pretty, pretty, uh, I, you know, anyway. So um, anyway, um, Abe did my Best singer in the world, <laughs> out in the car by myself. Uh, Steve, I was robbed at a gas station last night. After my hands stopped trembling, I managed to call the cops, and they were quick. There's one coming down. What happened? Uh, oh, it was all right. You got me. You got me. Yeah, flipping. Uh, I can only. I'm just going to kind of try to guess. Let's see. You could be paying. Um, I'm going to guess that you paid um, $3 and, well, I don't know what the uh, exchange rate is. I'm going to say three fifty a liter. Am I close? What, what were you paying per liter? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, I'm just going to guess... Uh, um, I, it's got, I mean, because it's all gasoline has always been more um, expensive than um, than the U.S. I mean, you guys are always paying more. So, what what were you paying per liter, Steve? I'm just three fifty uh, three pounds. Uh, I don't know. Whatever. Maybe you're doing the conversion for us here in the United States. Uh, like I said last week, I paid four twenty nine a gallon. Four twenty nine a gallon. I and you know, and just fifteen months ago it was two dollars. Uh, who made that bread and cookies for you in that video you made? Um, that had to be my daughter. I because I sure didn't do it. Had to be my daughter. Yeah. But I I'm interested in baking. I'm very interested. Okay, a dollar eighty a liter. So that doesn't seem too bad. Um. Well, I mean, if if that's a dollar eighty U.S., that would be um, that would be pretty bad. That'd be seven twenty a gallon here. Um, yeah. Well, it's just that the um, to me, Vanessa, the part about the bread was uh, okay. So even just getting the yeast. Let's see, what was it? Getting the yeast ready. Um, you know, and then you had to you had to. Uh, you had to lightly oil the bowl that you were going to put this, the dough in because the dough gets so sticky. Um, you had to mix it up. Um, you had to, um, um, I think that was it. Maybe maybe you had to put the yeast in the water and let that sit for a while. Um, 
oh, I, here's what it was. I was stunned at how accurate the measurements had to be. You can't just randomly take a flipping cup of flour, man. You have to weigh it. I mean, she has this very special scale. You know, there, there are these recipes from King Arthur's flour, like so many exact grams, so many exact grams of water. Um, I mean, you know, and then, then you have to, you know, once it's all mixed up, you have to let it rise. Then you've got to, uh, it's crazy. There's all this stuff that's got to happen. Sterling. Um, all right. Anyway. Yeah. It's about $7 a gallon. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's, that's very expensive. That's crazy. Uh, yeah, the, I've got a photograph of those stickers of Joe. I did that. I got one. Uh, the outdoor wood fired oven will make the, oh my gosh, it, I, there's nothing like the smell of fresh bread. Actually, just so you know, when I was a realtor, way back when in Ohio, I mean, it was a trick we used. All right. So um, when, when we would have open houses, um, we would go to the store and buy one of those cheap frozen pies. And, you know, you would get to the open house beforehand and, you know, and you would put, you would put this apple pie in the oven, you know, and, and have it so that as so that when people are coming to the open house, the the that pie, the house is just filled with the aroma of an, a fresh apple pie. Uh, you know, I mean, and just, so you know, I mean, aroma psychology is very powerful. There are businesses that that, uh, that it's, it's a science where they uh, there's certain aromas get you to buy. All right. So proofing the yeast. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Vanessa. Yes. Yeah, man. I'll tell you what. Um, very interesting. Okay, Steve, I'll watch that video. Um, I remember that video. Uh, so anyway, um, so two crutch words back to back. So anyway, <laughs> baking bread. My, I, I wish I could have met my grandfather. He was a great guy. He, he, he uh, I, I kind of wrote about him in a column about a month ago. When he retired, he would, he built all these stone arches. He, he was, he became a stonemason, built all this stuff out of limestone. What a guy. The, um, what else do you want me to talk about? We've got all kinds of things we can talk about here today. Emily. Oh, oh, Emily. There you go. Thank you. So that was about the cookie crunch. That was, uh, so Emily, that was for the National Parks on the Air radio event. And um, Emily was a ham radio operator, she still is, that lives in Pennsylvania. And she was very active in that national program. And she became known as the uh, cookie queen for some odd reason. Because she, I don't know how she got that. She, um, maybe I explain it in the video. But um she, her specialty was making chocolate chip cookies. So she became known as the, like, like the cookie queen, you know. And uh, so I guess she sent me some for some reason. It's probably in the video. Um, <laughs> crutch words, I know. The dose. Oh, very, yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. See, there, it's got, and I remember my daughter said that, that dad, very light oil do you know very light um the um i don't know uh no wheelchair for me not not soon i hope not i hope not um anyway whatever you want to talk about if you've got a question uh about your home you're watching happy to answer it i don't care what it is that's why i do the live stream I, i'm just here to save you time save you money happy to do it um i talked about angel a little bit ago you know, the woman in Schenectady, New York, who's going to build the dormer herself. She did another consult call with me about two hours ago, about an hour and a half ago. And um, she she's going to do great. She's she's jumping in, man. She's going to probably get it. Well, I don't know. I think I don't. it sounded like she doesn't have a building permit yet. So she's got to uh, she's going to be in for, for a surprise if she when she goes to get the permit, you know, to get the drawings. You know, I had a problem with a. Um, you know, I do these plumbing isometric and plumber riser diagrams for people. And I also draw gas lines and I draw um, water line drawings. And this gentleman in New Jersey uh, hired me about a month ago to do riser diagram and water lines. And the, the plumbing department, the, my riser diagram passed with flying colors. And they rejected 
they rejected my plumbing, my waterline drawing. And, and I had oversized everything. And, and the inspector came back with all these recommendations. It, I, I think it's a big sham. It's a big sham. They, they, they oversized it so much. I mean, they're, cost, they're, they're adding thousands of dollars to this job. Completely unnecessary. Completely unnecessary. I think there's some kind of graph going on, but I can't prove it. And I really don't care. But it's Old Bridge, New Jersey. So if you're thinking about building something in Old Bridge, New Jersey, don't do it. Go go to some other town. Um, wow, commercial. Yeah, I, I've seen those uh, commercial mixers. Where I, when I worked at the Chili Parlor, we were next door to a, a bakery, Virginia Bakery in Cincinnati. We used to. Um, this is gosh, I'm going. This is crazy. I'm going back 50 years ago. 50 years ago. I would work at the chili parlor in the summertime and um, the chili parlor stayed open until four in the morning. And um, we would get out, it would take us an hour to clean up. So we would get off work at five in the morning and the bakers next door would start at two 30 in the morning. That's, that's when they started. So we had, so the owners of the chili parlor did not work that late. All right. So, <laughs> We worked a deal with the baker, and, and the owner of the bakery wasn't getting there at 2.30 either. <laughs> so we kind of worked this barter deal out where it just so happened at 5, 5.30 is when they like to take their break for breakfast or whatever, dinner, lunch, whatever they call it, at that hour in the morning. And and we so we would bring them over chili <laughs> and conies or whatever they wanted, and we would take home literally fresh uh, stuff that just came out of the oven. And it just so happened... My the specialty one of the specialty items that they make is made out of Danish dough. They were called gems, so G E M S. They had just come out of the oven like five minutes before. Always when we get there, and um, they make these big bowls of that, um, you know, the white drizzle icing. <laughs> I don't know if you know how they do this at it, at the bakeries you go to. I don't I don't know how they do it now, but fifty years ago they just dipped their hand in and, and drizzled it over the thing. So. I would go home with a couple of boxes of these flipping gems. Oh my God. They're so good. There's nothing like Danish dough and Danish dough is so hard to make. Oh my God. Oh my gosh. I don't know how they did it. All right. Finally, we're getting a question from Steve. Here we go. Um, uh, I used my garment to, to, to find the hole from the inside of stairs. Bathroom means the vent pipe came up. Oh, that's, um, I don't know how you would do that, Vanessa, uh, but good for you. Um, Steve, I don't know. I have not seen these videos. Have you guys seen videos of Kensington and Philadelphia? It's no, I've not, but I will look it up. Um, uh, all right. So um, anyway, Steve retracted his question about, so I saw a question there, but now it's gone. Um, Saturday, this Saturday, it's supposed to be good weather down <clears throat> near the Massachusetts border. Uh, Kathy's going to an orchid show. I'm going to do a little bit of outdoor radio and, uh, it should be fun. Going to do a parks on the air activation. Um, all right. Um, exactly. Exactly. That's exactly right, Vanessa. You know exactly what I'm talking about. That, but man, if you do it right, and uh, boy, does it make the best pastry. Oh my gosh. Yes, Steve, do Joyce Tangers ever rest? Yes, yes, you bet they can. Um, the um, Here's the trouble over here in the United States. I don't know what you use in the UK. We used to have our treated lumber used to be called CCA. That was the acronym. So CCA standard for copper, chromated, arsenic. So it had those three things in it, copper, chromium, arsenic. And those three and a chemical brew did a pretty good job of protecting the lumber against rot. Not perfect, but pretty good. Well, they chromium is a heavy metal, arsenic, poisonous, so they, they got rid of it for residential use. You can still buy it for commercial. And they just came out with, they just increased the amount of copper they put in. So it's, it's, 
it's called copper quat, you know. So the, the, the and copper is, and a lot of people don't know this, copper is a natural biocide. Uh, it's just a natural, it's a poison for, for most biological things. That's why copper was nailed on the ship, on the hulls of like our old iron sides, uh, on the famous clipper ships like the Thermopylae, Cuddy Sark. Uh, I'm sure the British Navy put copper on the hulls of their ships because then the barnacles wouldn't grow on the wood. And if you have barnacles growing on the hull of the ship, it slows it down in the water, produces a lot of drag. The trouble is that the copper, when the copper mixes with water, and then you've got the zinc coating on the uh, on the um, joist hanger, you're making a battery, and you've got this uh, galvanic reaction happening, and it sacrifices the iron. So the joist hangers have to have a really thick coating of zinc on them, or they will rust. And uh, so not all joist hangers are the same. Uh, we have a company here in the United States called Simpson Strong Tie. They make really good ones. They make really good joist hangers, really, really good. But you also have to make sure you use the right fasteners. I, they, they make nails. They make special joist hanger nails, but don't don't use them. They make a special hot dip galvanized. Uh, it's like a miniature lag bolt. Uh, that you and Simpson makes those, and you want to use their structure, their structural bolts. You know, and they screw in. But you know, just got a a little hex head. You know, you you get a, a an adapter that fits in your driver. Zip zip zip. Put them in really quickly. So, uh, oh, I see you put trusses in. I got it. Um, all right. Um, so anyway, I hope that answers your question. So the answer is yes. Joist hangers can rust. And in, like where you live, you know, Stephen, in London, so close to the ocean, you know, anybody who lives in a marine environment, like people who live along the coast, um, they got to really watch it. I mean, if I was building a house or if I was building a structure that I wanted to last for a long time, I would do my best to try to find, see if I could find stainless steel joist hangers. Because just use, I mean, in a marine environment, oh my gosh. I mean, you you see it. I'm sure you've seen all kinds of metal rust. You know, there's an old saying, uh, old saying that ship captains say all the time, that the sea eats men and iron. All right. All right, let me get caught up. Uh, I have, Will, I have a slight drop down in the middle of the house where the main support beam rests on two adjustable supports in the basement. Okay, well, let's crank it up. Uh, um, well, I don't know, Will. So why don't you, you know, you know how to get a hold of me privately. Why don't you send me some photos? Send me some. I want to see the photos of the, of the thing, the adjuster, whatever. We can, we can. Lift it up. I've lifted. I've, you'd be stunned what I've done before. Yep, croissants. Yep. Uh, lag bolt. Well, I don't like lag bolts to put together wood to wood on outdoor decks uh, because they um, you can overdrive it. Like if you over tighten the lag bolt, it it doesn't hold as well. The better connection for for joist hangers, they make these. Small screws. I mean, they're like inch and a half, two inches long. And they're just like a little, they're like a miniature lag bolt. And they're okay for joist hangers, uh, as long as you don't overdrive them. And it's hard to overdrive it, although it's not. Because if you spin it too much, you'll uh, you, it loses the holding power in the wood. But um, for big wood-to-wood -wood connection, it should be through bolts. And you know what a through bolt is? It's a bolt that has like the regular uh, threads on the end that you would put a nut on. So it's got a car it's got we call them carriage bolts here. It's got like a mushroom head on the one end, and then at the other end, it's got threads. You drive it all the way through the wood, it sticks through about that far, and then you put the washer and a nut on and tighten it up with a wrench. Um, yeah, there's different types of stainless steel. John, my cousin flies a corporate jet, Falcon 900. Well, she's already got a job. Get this. She's already been hired. Here, here's the deal. She she basically got hired on Monday. So today's Thursday. But the tr actually Tuesday. But the problem is, no, I guess it was Monday. I don't know. I think it was Monday. In I may I, I would only bet ten dollars on what I'm about to tell you. And I know a little bit of this because of my son-in-law. 
the, the state of California is so liberal that, and they're, they're so pro-employee, not employer, that if you're a full-time employee in California, and I don't know if there's a length of term, all right? I Like I said, I don't want to bet $10 on this. But if you're a full-time employee and you get fired or laid off or whatever, the company's got to give you nine months of pay. The loophole, so, so in other words, and, and my, my son-in-law, who is like upper mid-level management in the tech industry, he said the most dangerous thing any company can do anywhere is hire somebody. Isn't that crazy? But what he means by that is that human the human resources are so valuable that, that you don't want to hire a toxic person. You, they can't be toxic. You don't want to hire a loser. There, there's this, the laundry list is this long, all right? So um, the way they get around it in California is they hire you part-time. And so you're just part-time, and then they can see if you're a loser or whatever, then you're out the door. They don't have to pay your nine-month salary. But I'm convinced, <laughs> I'm telling you right now, when I do my live stream next Tuesday, I'm pretty convinced that I'm going to be telling you, guess what? She got hired by that, whoever the mystery person is. Because as I told her on the phone yesterday, the mystery person, they've already burned through six flight attendants that have got experience. But because they got a bad attitude or who knows, the laundry list is a mile long of why they got let go. And, and my daughter's teacher told the, the person, the assistant, that's not going to happen with Kelly. Trust me. Trust me. And um, so the the mystery person is, I, I don't want to say it's desperate, but you understand what in that situation, they've already been through six. It's like, we, we're done with that. We, we, we don't have to wait. We can't be wasting our time. We want to find the right person. And so, and then because of what, my daughter's teacher told the people, the, the, the mystery person or the mystery person's assistant, they know that my daughter is going to get poached by somebody else. All right. Nothing about this is hard. Where's Lorena? at? Nothing about this is hard. So I told my daughter, I said, you have to be mentally prepared because there's a very possibility halfway through the interview, they just stop it and say, when can you start? Can you start? Can you start tomorrow? I'm serious. I said you have to be prepared for that. So on on so John on Tuesday, um, I may say you're not going to believe it. She's working for the mystery person. But I told her I said, don't take the job if you get a bad vibe. Don't do it. Don't do it. Steve wants to know, what is the breaking strain for a choice? Well, that's um, that's like a, a million dollar question, Steve, because, uh, boy, I wish I had the span tables in front of me. Here's the interesting thing. Here's what you need to know. This shouldn't surprise you. Maybe it would, though, because because you don't have a I mean, you guys cut down all your trees hundreds of years ago. All right. So here in America, we have a lot of different species of trees. So we have Douglas fir, uh, we have uh, southern yellow pine, we have what they call spruce pine fir, which is a like a hybrid. All of our wall studs, most of our wall studs we put up are all spruce pine fir. And so on this piece of lumber, you'll see an acronym, SPF. That stands for spruce pine fir. Just all evergreen trees, all, all softwood. They're all softwood. The, um, the thing is, they all, because the species are different, they all have a different um, uh, strength. And and the spruce pine fir are, are not too good. They're, they're okay. They're good for vertical loads. But, but making beams out of spruce pine fir, not a good idea. Southern yellow pine, very strong. A Douglas fir, the strongest. I mean, in, in the softwoods. We're talking softwoods. You know, you would know. I, I, there's very few people in America that could afford to use hardwoods for framing lumber. 
now it gets worse. All right. So, so that's just the species. You, you have strength issues. Then each species has a grade of lumber. For example, in the old days, we would call a piece like a floor joist, Steve, that had no knots in it. It was just a beautiful piece of lumber with no knots. That would be called select. And then the next one below that is grade one. So one, uh, grade one, really good. It, it might only have a knot every four feet, and the knot's got, knot's got to be tight, and a knot can't be bigger than a certain diameter. And then there's number two. It can have more knots, bigger knots. Then there's number three, lots of knots. And knots are weak spots in the wood. So each each grade under the species have has different weight and bearing cap capacities. And we have all these tables. We have these. You can go online and look up. Just look up U.S. lumber span tables. U.S. USA lumber span tables. It will blow your mind. Blow your flipping mind. And it shows you everything, how far they can span, how much weight they have to hold. It's crazy. Hi, Keith. How you doing? Um, Keith wants to escape California. I know. My, I told my daughter, you're the California's going to love you, man, because people are getting the hell out of there. Um, the building costs are high. I mean, Keith. I mean, they're and they're going to get worse. This inflation thing that's going on right now here in America. It first of all, here's what you need to understand about the number. So, what was the number they reported a few weeks ago? Eight percent, like seven point nine, eight percent, whatever. It's actually double that, maybe more. What you need to understand is that the government, they're not using, they've changed the definition of what, they've changed how they compute it. In other words, if you go back to the 1970s, when we had out of control inflation under President Jimmy Carter, he no relation to me. Um, our, if you use the same formula to calculate today's inflation, we'd probably be up we're near 18% right now maybe more. Here's what you need. I mean, and you know this to be true. So look at the price of gasoline, 200%. I'm sorry, 100% inflation. Look at the price of food. M many of the common things you buy, they're up 20, 30, 40%. So you, so you, as a consumer, when you see the government give you this number and say, oh, it's only 7.9. You know, like what I say, when I see that in, on my monitor, I actually say out loud here in the cave when no one's going to go, why don't you put your crack pipe down? Put your flipping crack pipe away. Come on. We know it's a lot worse. <laughs> now, to get to answer your question. So, um, there, the good news is, but I don't know where, if you have to move to a certain location because of your job, the, the problem is, is that the building costs like the labor costs are like this all over America. They're typically the South has always been lower. But the trouble is right now from what all the email that I'm getting, the shortage of, of workers is unbelievable. And contractors, it's, it's um, the whole supply demand thing is just way out of whack, way out of whack. Well, I can say this, you want to make a lot of money? Go start being a building contractor. I mean, I hope you know what you're doing, but oh my gosh, oh my gosh, the amount of money you could make. I wish Alex was here. If Alex was here, Alex hasn't been around for a month. So the building costs are high. That's the answer to your question. Material costs high, and they're going to get they're going to get worse. Um, I know VIPs can be very demanding. I know, I know. I and I, she knows all this stuff. And she's got that, she's had that training in that course. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. She's she's a really, she's a really smart young woman. And um, here's how tough she is. So she was the overnight bartender at El Bate in Old San Juan, Puerto, overnight bartender. I mean, you have to, by herself. She didn't have any bar help. She didn't have a, uh, forget what they call that person. Oh, back bar person. I mean, in in old San, in Puerto Rico, they keep the bars up until six in the morning. <laughs> I mean, tough, tough hombres overnight, man. She dealt with those people. 
She uh, she's she is not some uh, lamb being led to slaughter. I can tell you that. And she also, what I like about her, she does not put up with any uh, crap. And in one of her past jobs, uh, one of her bosses uh, tried to sexually abuse her. You know, and she put a stop to that. But she's already, you know, she she's pretty smart. Keith, uh, four bedroom, two and a half bath, twenty first grade uh, I well, Keith, I mean the trouble. Is, here's how. Well, here's how to find. I have a column about how to answer that. I have a column on my website. It's an old column, about 20 years old. Um, so here's how you determine that. Wherever you want to move to or wherever you can move to, just look at the, what, what I call stick built houses. There are stick builders, you know, who build homes and they put them on the market. So talk to any realtor in that area. Just just get online and um, go, go to the different real estate websites. And with that spec, and, and you'll find new homes. So you'll know what the building cost is. Steve, I saw a DIY program here once uh, and this house hit a rotten joist and no, no, who, whatever. See, <laughs> that's why I don't watch those shows because they're all, most of them are 90% entertainment, 10% fluff. But that's, no, joist did not, here's what the code is in, in the United States, Steve. That's by, your question's great, by the way. And I'm sure in London, you have the similar code. Here in the United States, um, I think we uh, we designed for uh, 20, 20 pounds a square foot live load, 10 pounds a square foot dead load. All right. So um, so we'll do the math here in a second. That's what the code used to be. I don't know that still is. Decks are typically 40 pounds square. Now, it could be I could be wrong. It could be 40. I'm going to say it's 40. And then outside decks have to be 60. I could be wrong. You could look it up. We could uh, somebody actually go look that up for me right now. Just go online. Find out what the. Uh, live and dead load is for deck. But, Steve, let's just use 40 pounds. So we're going to say, um, we'll, we'll just say 40 pounds a square foot. That's going to get us really close. So a uh, 10 by 12 room is 120 square feet um, times 40, um, 0084. So a 10, so in a room that's three meters by four, Four meters over there, a three meter by four meter room, kind of a smallish bedroom. In America, that you could you could your that floor has is designed to hold four thousand eight hundred pounds. So in your that would be two point two pounds to a kilogram. So that would be two two thousand kilograms, right? Yeah, two thousand kilograms. Is that right? Yeah, two point two pounds. Yes, one kilo is two point two pounds. Yes. So not that much weight. So there's no way one joist has got to hold 24 tons. That's completely wrong. No, no. All right. Um, eight bit vinyl lumber is so high that I feel like a lot of people will not be doing that. Um, I don't know. There's some people. Well, we have this. The problem we have here in America right now is the uh, middle class is just vaporizing vaporizing. So we have people who are making a lot of money. And to them, like if you tell them, well, this is going to cost an extra hundred grand, they go fine, go whatever. When can, they're, they're, typically their comment will be, well, when can you get it done? Yeah, I know you're trying to get out of London. I know it's horrible. Vanessa, they remove anything that has high inflation from the formula. Exactly. Exactly right, Vanessa. Exactly. 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 It's crazy. So, so Keith, I, I'm sorry. I, I'm not able to really answer your question, but I, I can tell you how to get the answer. Just go online to whatever city you think you can move to and just look at the cost of new houses. I mean, but the trouble is, the entire real estate market is upside down. My son, last weekend, you know, I think I told, I wrote a column about it on Monday. We, he, he went to, he needs to buy a house. He's trying to get out of his apartment. His lease is up. He's running out of time. And we went to look at this house. All these other people were there looking too. On Monday morning, there were twelve offers. The asking price was three eighty five. He offered four ten. 
$25,000 more. He didn't get it. It's crazy. It's crazy. So I, I don't know what to tell you, Keith. 150K home is selling for 300K. Yeah, crazy. Crazy. Something bad's going to happen. I just can't tell you when, but I just. And I, I don't like to be the guy on here that is doom and gloom. I, I don't like to be that way. But I, I can tell you, um, you um, you need to be prepared. And I, I think that my overarching message always is the more self-sufficient you can be, the better. You know, I know there are very few people that can build their own home. I know that. Um, they don't have the time and they don't have the skills, but, um, you need to, um, you need to, and, and you're blessed. You're so lucky. I cannot tell you how lucky you are. There's a lot of crap videos out there, a lot of crappy ones, but there are video, you, you do enough research. There's enough videos on YouTube. You should be able to get by and do some stuff. Um, for example, like I, I wanted, to, I just wanted to watch to see how they do it. I already knew how to do it, but I, I thought, I want to see what the pros, how they repre replace the brake line on my truck. I watched two videos. They were, they were not bad. They guys did a really good job. Um, so, but here's the other thing. I, I'll, as long as I'm alive and I'm still in business, I'll be your lifeline. I mean, remember, if you just happen to tune in, I, I talked earlier about how before the live stream, I did two, in the hour before the live stream, I did two of my paid consult calls. Help! I, the one guy, the one guy, I was helping him engineer this roof. I saved this guy five thousand dollars, five thousand bucks. You know, he he um and I, he he paid me fifty bucks. And an angel in Schenectady, New York, she probably was in tears. She was so happy. I, I saved her on today's call probably three thousand bucks, so I can save you money too. Um, yeah, you're right. We're going to, no, we're going to prevail. There's no doubt about it. I'm not worried about that, but, uh, let's see. Let me get caught up. Um, is it easy to buy land here? Yes, Steve, very easy. Um, the problem, here's the problem with land though. Um, you cannot typically get financing on land. All right. So in other words, a bank, they don't like to lend money on land. So you have to pay cash. Or you have to, if you have an existing home that you have a lot of equity on, you have to kind of get another loan on your home. And then you walk away from that closing with a lot of cash from the equity. And then you use that cash to buy the land. You, you might find an owner, a landowner who will do a land contract where he'll finance it. Um, that would be awesome. But um, not easy to do. But you can, like here in New Hampshire, Steve, there's land... Just go online, go to go to Zillow.com, go to the different websites here in America, type in New Hampshire, look at all the land for sale. It's like easy, easy to find land, easy. Not in every state, but it's easy to find land here in the Northeast where Will and I live. Um, gold prices are up. I haven't been paying attention. I know it's up near two grand an ounce. Uh, yeah, Vanessa, I think you might be right um, about that. People won't have a home. 8-Bit says, people are buying these houses at stupid prices. I know, exactly. My son and I were talking about that. Economy is going to crash. Exactly. They'll be really upside down. I know. Uh, luckily, my son's okay. Um, he just didn't want to, you know, he's he's he finally saved up enough money. And he understands that the check, I mean, he's, his rent is close to two grand a month. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy money. Keith, uh, luckily we have a house to sell here and can work remote. Okay, good, good. Just um, I don't know if you want to move all the way across the freaking nation, but New Hampshire, pretty nice place. Just so you know, I've, been, I've traveled to all the United States. I've traveled to every state. Only one state in the lower 44. You know, we have 44 states and four commonwealths. 
Um, I've been to all of them except one. I've not been to North Dakota, but I know that North Dakota is a carbon copy of South Dakota. And in my opinion, the most beautiful state in the nation is California. I've been all over California, beautiful state. I'm not talking about the cities. The second most beautiful state in America, in my opinion, and I've been, like I said, not counting Hawaii, not counting Alaska, they're in a class all themselves. Um, New Hampshire, 87% of our state is still forested. If you're serious about it, you, sh you need to talk to me privately. John, rep, two years ago, I got a ton of K OSB for 735 and uh, soared to over 50. I know, insanity. I cannot believe it's $58 at Home Depot for a sheet of OSB. I have two one-acre lots on the market, moving slow. Yeah, and yeah, it depends on where they are. I mean, land land is land is available. It's not always easy to liquidate. That's the trouble with land. Vanessa's got five states left to visit. Well, I've got three. You know, Alaska, Hawaii, and um, North Dakota. Lived in Alaska for five years. Some of the photos, you know, like Mount like Denali National Park and, you know, the coastline, all the fjords or whatever. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. He was in Texas, uh, Steve. He, uh, JFK, I've, been, I, I've actually been exactly right where he got shot on the, the plaza. Uh, he was in Dallas, Texas. The, the, uh, that school, that school build, the, the building's still there. I, just, you know, on a personal level, um, that that was a uh, the uh, the the guy that they framed Oswald. That I don't. That was not him. No. If you look at the Zapruder film, all right. I'm not a ballistics expert, okay, but I know a little bit about guns. I know a little bit. So in the Zapruder film, in one or two of the frames, first they got shot in the neck from behind, but then then you know he started to slump forward, and then the second shot hit him somewhere like here, and you see all this stuff. Well, it's his head and brains going backwards, and his head went like that. I don't care what anybody says. That shot had to come from in front, you know, from the, uh, you know, where, what, what do they call that? The Whatever. Anyway, the grassy knoll, the grassy knoll, or down in a storm sewer. You know, a sniper could have been in a storm sewer right there. Anyway, I think it was the CIA because Kennedy was really upset about the CIA and he said he was going to get rid of the CIA. And I think the CIA took him out. But I don't know that well. We know. We, we know. Here's what we do know. We know something fishy is going on because they sealed the records, all of the records around it. They released some recently, I think. But there's still stuff that we don't know. And and you can't trust everybody anyway. So I, on a personal level, I'm just telling you, you could see in that Zapruder film, you know, he, you can see all the stuff go backwards. I mean, if you're going to get shot from behind, all the stuff's going to go that way, right? What do I, what do I know? I'm not a ballistics expert. Um. Uh, all right. Uh, he was in a terrible state. He got shot. Yeah. Yeah. Dallas, Texas, buddy. Dallas school, the school depository, school something depository building. On the tip of my tongue, there was an FBI building and a warehouse nest here. Yeah, I got a show up Friday. Okay. John Rep. I knew a guy that swore Oswald. Yeah, I, I don't know. Oh, Steve, um, <laughs> I mean, they've always lied to us. <laughs> they've always lied to us, always, hundreds and hundreds of years. 8-Bit Vinyl, I'm a JFK fanatic. Good, there you go. See, there's that's what I'm talking about, superpowers, okay? Okay, good. So, So chime in right now. So you saw the Zapruder film, all right? The guy that was on the 
side, taking the little eight millimeter, you know, and Kennedy goes behind this. He gets shot right before he goes behind that sign, the sign that blocked it, you know, and you could, you know, he, he puts his hands up to his neck. All right. And then he comes out from the sign and then like the next frame, boom, and all half of his head or a quarter of his head goes backwards. I, are you kidding me? There's no flipping way that would happen from a shot coming from behind. I don't care what anybody says. Oh, I didn't get my, I didn't get your joke. That's the trouble with texting. All right. Um, let's see. There was a misfire from a body car, bodyguard that ran behind the car and possibly made the kill shot. Uh, bodyguard, yeah. Uh, yeah. Exactly. I, we, we don't know so much around it. I mean, it's just all. And the whole Warren Commission report, give me a break. I, I don't. The fix was in, just like the whole January 6th committee up there. I don't trust any of that stuff. No, I don't. I've gotten so cynical about everything. I don't trust anything. And then when they tell you, sorry, we got to see all the files. We can't, you can't see that. Well, then that tells you all you need to know that. Yeah, no, exactly, exactly, Vanessa. Oh, terrible state, not Texas, the state. Oh, I get it. I get it now. <laughs> um, anyway, so Kennedy, um, here's the interesting thing to show you our politics here in America. So if JFK were alive today, I mean, if he were alive in, um, in this time, he'd be a flipping... He might be like a right-wing Republican. I'm serious. Right-wing Republican. I mean, it's an inauguration speech. Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do. You would never hear a current Democrat in America say that. Not one. And there's so many flipping rhinos. They would never say that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um. Dealey Plaza, is it? Oh, so I've been there. It's 8-bit. It's, it, uh, it's just like everything you're seeing. It's just like it. And you've got to get there to see the, the school box. What, what, what's the name of that building? School something depository. School. Uh, it's on the tip of my tongue. It, I was just like in awe looking up at it. You know, because, uh, you know, I was doing the the triangulation. Like, well, okay, uh, at that window, you know, yeah, I, I can... I mean, I've, I've, uh, I've got. I don't want to go back and show you because I, I don't want to be banned. But right behind that door, um, water. It's a water thing. It's a water thing. Um, the name rhymes with Bennington, <laughs> and uh, I'll say this. Um, um, For 308 days, <laughs> 308, three, 308, so 308, 308 days, um, I uh, have been wanting Skyline Chili. <laughs> so I think you can put all that together. So uh, with a big, I've got with a big thing that you look through, like a big thing. Um, and anyway, uh, I can see how, I mean, if you truly were a sniper, uh, not a problem, not a problem to make that shot. Not, not even a problem, especially with the rifle supported. I mean, if you're just free holding the rifle, I get it. Not easy, but I mean, a, a sharpshooter can do it. But, but if you've got that thing on a sandbag or a stack of books, are you kidding me? And, and you've sighted it in, you know, the distance. That's an easy shot, man. School book depository. That's it. Exactly. School book depository. How could I forget that? Uh, yeah, you got to get there, eight bit. So just go. I mean, well, it's you know, it's easier said than done. Um, it's a great road trip. It's a great road trip because I know you you live here in New Hampshire with me, right? You're just south of me, right? I'm sure of that. I would bet fifty bucks on that. I would bet fifty dollars. You you live south of me. Um, that's a great road trip because I would do that road trip and I would go. Um, you know, probably down, uh, yeah, Epsom. That's what I thought, right? So um, 
I would definitely go through Tennessee and do the whole barbecue thing. Oh my gosh. Some great barbecue, man, in Tennessee. And then if you like bourbon, like if you're a, a whiskey drinker like my son, go to the bourbon, uh, do the bourbon tours. Um, I don't know, Will, if they do tours of the, in the depository building. Yeah, exactly. Oswald gets killed. Exactly. I mean, it, it just... I, there's so many fascinating things about that. Yeah. Uh, Vanessa, remember the Korean airline crash in the Arctic? We had a black KC-10 in air. Interesting. Um, was that the one, Vanessa, Was are we talking about the one that um, Ch China shot down? Or who? Are we talking about the one airliner that they shot, the Chinese or the Russians shot down? Um, <laughs> right. So anyway, um, yeah. So Skyline Chili, the, we call it plain chili. If you want beans, you have to add them. You know, they're just regular small red beans. Um, Robert Kennedy, same thing. Robert Kennedy killed. Um, they, they were, they knew something. They, there was everything. I, I just wish we could get the facts about what really was going on. And, and what I, I, I know you, you might get tired of this. Kathy doesn't want me to say it anymore. She just rolls her eyes because I come out and say that's Game of Thrones stuff. So the whole Kennedy brother thing, Game of Thrones, that's all Game of Thrones. If you've not, I'm telling you, if you've not read the Game of Thrones book, just read book one. There's five books, but read just book one. You'll start to, all of a sudden you'll go, oh my God, I get it now. I see what's going on here today. It's all Game of Thrones stuff. Yeah. Yes. Yes. USR shot it down. Yeah. Well, or so we think. So we think. See, I see the trouble for me, Vanessa. I've become so cynical. I just don't believe anything. You know, I don't know who shot it down. JFK is one of my favorite movies of all time. Yeah. Yeah, I do too. I love stories that make you think. Too many secrets. Exactly. Like the heart of a woman. So I like lines from um, um, movies, like really great script lines, you know, being a professional writer. So if you watch the movie Titanic from that's now what? Um, it's hard to believe. It's hard to believe that movie is uh, 22, 23 years old. Wow. So the, the old Rose in that, you know, in that movie said a woman's heart is a deep ocean of secrets. And she said that line right kind of at the end where she had told the story about her and Jack hooking up on the boat when she was like 17, 18 years old and that her husband never knew about it. I just thought that was a great line. A woman's heart is a deep ocean of secrets. That's a great line. Um, <laughs> until I pass away, my clearance. Well, I hope you don't go away soon. Cause I, cause I just, you know, Vanessa, you're, you're like Steve there. You're, I want to meet everybody that's here at regular, but I'm hoping that, that um, I'm, we're going to do a, we're going to do a, um, a, a meetup on my 90 acres this summer. All right. I don't know when yet. I'm going to pick a nice time. And it's not that far for you to drive, but you and your husband can come up, whatever. Uh, we could just have a really fun day. Everybody meeting each other, have a really great picnic. Uh, really great time. Because um, you, you'll just entertain us for hours with your stories about the military. Oh, I'm fascinated about all that stuff. Uh, yeah, the black, bingo. Exactly. <laughs> There's spy play. Right. Exactly. There's so much we don't know. Uh, I like to listen to Robert Kennedy. So, so we don't know. I don't know why. I don't know why Robert Kennedy was shot. I don't know. I don't know what. I don't know. I don't know why. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, Eight bits right about that. Um, look where the live stream goes. And I love just so you know. 
this is why I ask you if you if you're new to the stream and you're not here, this is why I ask you to check in and to list your superpower because of what's happening in the chat right now. Because here we've got a conversation going between two two people, two other viewers. And really cool. I like that. I love everything about that. You know, um, to get command to tell me when. Wow. I'll bet, man. Um, I'll bet. Oh, my gosh. Have you... Um, I'm sure you've heard that one that one of the one of the pilots, I forget, he's a real famous guy, gave talks all around. He was the guy who took who took all these photos. He got permission while the it was still a secret plane to take photos. I don't know how he ever got that permission. But then after he got out, he published all these. Well, he told that speed story. Have you ever watched that video or watched him tell that story of the speed, you know, the, the, the uh, over LA, the LA basin? Um if not, you gotta gotta watch that video. I forget. Um, it's on YouTube. Hilarious. <laughs> you know, with air traffic controllers, like a, a plane will ask how fast it's going because their radar does the math and, and on the screen, you know, already know this, Vanessa. They tells how fast they're going. <laughs> and the Cessna, you know, pilot calls and he wants to know how fast he's going. Like, oh, I don't know, 120 miles an hour. <laughs> Then a, then a twin engine guy calls in. You know, he wants to be better than the Cessna. You know, what's my airspeed? I don't know. 190. <laughs> and some some marine pilot thought he'd be a badass with down the valley. Well, how fast am I going? You know, he's in a FA-18, whatever. <laughs> Said, I don't know, 525. <laughs> Just about that time, the SR-71 was coming over, you know. <laughs> Not really showing up on the radar. And he, they say... How fast are we going? Uh, I don't know, 2,100 miles an hour. <laughs> and he said, that the radio, no, 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 you didn't hear anything else on the radio. Nobody else got on the radio. <laughs> it's a great video if you've not watched it. Oh, my gosh. Uh, oh, wait. It was so funny. Oh, my gosh. Um, uh, Dr. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Oh, Dr. I know, Dr. Kennedy Jr. Yeah. So he's on a crusade right now. He's really amped up about, uh, he hates Dr. Fraudchi. Oh, man. He just hates that guy. Woo. Um, yeah, SR-71 had to be much more exciting. Yeah. Yeah, the S oh, SR-71. What a plane. Oh my gosh. I heard that I, I could I don't know if this is true, that you know, the body of the plane and the parts got so hot from the friction that they had to be loose on the ground and that the fuel tanks would leak. And and they had and they wouldn't stop leaking until they got up to kind of speed. I don't know if that's true or not, but um I don't know. Seems hard to believe, but could be true. I mean, the metals expand. Um, you never know where Ask the Builder <laughs> live stream is going to go. SR-71s. What great planes. What great technology. Oh, yeah. Fraudchi. Yeah. Oh, he is such an evil guy. If you've not. So if uh, he and this other doctor at the NIH, they are tied into a bunch of these patents and um, making millions and millions of dollars on these patents. It should it should be illegal. Um, yeah, yeah, the heat sealed everything up. Yeah, I thought so. Uh, so anyway, yeah, fraud sheet, bad guy, bad, bad man, bad. Everything about him is bad. Bad guy. So bad. Um, hmm. Jeez. Oh yeah, yeah. The um, oh yeah. They, but also they they uh to a degree, um, you know they, I don't know what happened with uh, uh Francis Powers. You know Gary Powers who got shot down over Russia. I don't know if Russia had just come up. You know maybe the Russia Russia back then had um, just decided. You know what, 
by God, we'll get a freaking missile that'll go that high. And so maybe Russia got lucky and, and did some kind of development we didn't know about and, and had a missile that went up and got it, obviously. All right. So, um, but yeah, those, um, no, you, I mean, th th those, like, those are patriots. All right. So that's like my definition of a patriot. And so Vanessa has been in the military all these years. Look at how Vanessa sacrificed for us. Her health suffering as a result. Um, my dad, I mean, there's millions, millions of people, all right? Um, Good Knight's not here today. He he uh, served. He's retired Air Force. You may be retired, retired military. I don't know because you've not checked in. Um, put your life on the line. Um all for your country because you love it so much. Fauci, when the world was trying to find the... Yeah, exactly. He's a... Everything about Fauci, he's a bad guy. He's a very bad man. Yeah, exactly, Steve. He was responsible for that. Exactly, exactly. He was pushing this drug that he was getting money from, and that drug was killing all the people who had AIDS, killing them. It's all, all that they tried to cover it up as best they could, but they didn't get covered all completely up. John, uh, in these times, we need a real leader. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it, it is. We do. And the, um, I don't. My problem is, is that I, I, I'm I've become so cynical that I just feel, and that's the problem that that Trump faced when he was in office. I mean, I don't want to say he came in um, naive, but I think what happened is once he got in, I don't think he really appreciated how bad it was, like how deep the cancer ran, and how co-opted many were. And and I and I I just keep going back to it. I mean, just and it's at every level, all right. So not only is it in federal, but it's state, local, even in my HOA. I'm telling you, it's just read book one of Game of Thrones, and there's so much backstabbing, and spies, and you can't trust anybody. I mean, when I was on council back in Cincinnati, Ohio. I got stabbed in the back by two other councilmen. They they supported me in committee meetings, and then they got co-opted, or when we came to a vote, they turned on me. It's a tiny little village. So imagine, imagine how how complex the US government is, and for one person to try to go in and clean all that up. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, you're you're dreaming. You're dreaming. So Vanessa says all the White House stations are being closed down. I was one of the inspectors. Wow. Eight bit. Uh, thanks for being here. Um, I should do a New Hampshire meetup, and maybe we can get together for lunch one day. All right, Steve. Yeah, Cruella Deville. Yeah. Um, uh, Vanessa Fauci falsely claimed he discovered the. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I heard that Tief or someone else could be the new leader. If you really want to think, if you really want to kind of go to the like conspiracy stuff, I'd say the word conspiracy. Not really. I know you're going to think I'm nuts for saying this. You know. The T-man could be in charge right now. The White Hats could be in charge. And what we're all watching is a movie. I mean, you have to always open yourself up to that possibility. I mean, did you see, like, for example, did you see, like Kathy sent me this morning. I'll actually put the link in. I've got it right here. Check this out. This is how you have to wonder about these people. All right. So this was a... 
this was a a tweet that the White House put out today. Um, I'm just trying to find it here. Here we go. I hope this passed over. All right. So let's see if this works. Come on. Um, I don't think, wait a second. Give me, hold on here. There we go. All right. I hope this works. That link, I just, you know, oh, I'm sorry. Um, damn it. Um, uh, just, uh. It's that's too long. It won't let me paste paste it in. Anyway, here's I'll just describe it. So um Kathy sent me to go to Twitter today. So I went to Twitter. I don't I don't didn't sign in. I haven't used my Twitter account in eight, 10 years, whatever, long time. Um and here was a post from the White House about um the Ukraine. I mean, it's just it was done this morning, and they have a picture of of Brandon sitting at the desk in the Oval Office, but behind him, through the glass, all the trees have leaves on them. I, there's no leaves on the trees in freaking Washington, D.C. right now, or they're just starting to bud out. What kind of idiots put a freaking photo in like that? Okay, now, granted, I get it. He's over in Belgium, or wherever he is today. Where, he's over in Europe. Trump was the most likely to on Kamaz with them and they fought him because they refused to give. Uh, I, I think that my feeling about that, John, is that he was not part of the deep state and he wasn't beholden to anyone. What happens is you go up there, you get co-opted, you know, by your, by the donation, by the campaign contributions. It's, it's Game of Thrones stuff, all right? So Trump, he, he didn't, he, he didn't need to, he didn't need any corporate money. Freaking billionaire. All right. So, the, and he, he was on a mission. So I've talked about, I talked about this months ago. I'll just say this real fast. So I like, I, I'm a facts driven person. I like facts. Let's go back in time. Let's go back to 2015. Let's go back to 2015 before Trump came down the escalator with Melania to make the announcement that he was going to run. Let's imagine we're Trump. How much is he worth at the time? I don't know, five, six, seven billion dollars. How old was he at the time? I think it was 68, 69. So he's in the twilight of his life. He's not a dumb man. He's not stupid. He knows, he knows that, um, going into the shredder, that it's going to be horrible. Not only for him, for his entire family. He, he knows that, all right? That's a fact. Come on, this is facts. And being president of the United States, if you do not know this, it's the most dangerous job in the world. The most dangerous. You have a target. You have a bullseye right here on your chest and your back and your head. Seriously. Why do you think they go around in armored cars and have all this protection? Most dangerous job in the world. Every, many people want to kill you. Many. So you have to ask yourself, if you were a billionaire and you could play golf all day or you could go to the Caribbean or do whatever you wanted, Why would you want to to take the be, to do the most dangerous job in the world? Why you know just think about that. Just just think. Just like use critical thinking skills. He's at towards the end of his life. Like if you have all that money, like maybe I want to play golf each day. Maybe I want to take my son. You know what's his son's name? I forget his son's name. 
So who we had with Melania, you know, that teenager, he's kind of gangly, nice kid, probably, probably a great kid, you know, take him around, teach him stuff, go fly fishing, whatever. Why would you want to, to take a job where you're working 14, 15 hours a day? I, I mean, it only could be for one reason, that he's a true patriot. And, and here, here's what I think. When I said the night that he announced his candidacy, Kathy thought, I, I told her right then, I said, he's going to win the race. She thought I was nuts. She thought I was crazy. I said, oh, he's going to win. There's no doubt about it. Why do you think that? Have you not been listening to what he's saying? He's saying what whatever, what all of us want to say and we're too afraid to say. And, uh, and I was right. All right. So anyway... He did. Here's what I think. I think that 2013, 2014, he saw what had happened with Obama all those eight years. And he saw where the country's going. Like, we are going down the flipping tubes. And so he did not want that for his kids, his adult children, and his young son, and his grandkids. Like, this is crazy. This is nuts. And, and I actually think he was chosen, you know, by God. I mean, because God, you know, every now and then God does a reset. But why God, I, I think, I think about the whole mail order president that we have now. And that was done by God too. And I think it was done because he just wanted to show everybody how bad the bad people are because they got, they got so greedy. And that's why I think we're going to see a big change in, the, in this year. This year, something big is going to happen. What do I know? What do I know? Seriously. I used to eat lunch for 20 plus years, sitting on empty, overturned drywall buckets. What could I possibly know? I'll get caught up here. I know, Steve. I know you. I, I'm, I'm, I've got your same concern. That we got to fix this whole... We can't have the mail-in voting. We cannot do the mail-in voting. And we got to get rid of the machines. The machines are bad. I know I, there are many of us that don't want it. We're, uh, you know. Yeah. They, well, Vanessa, you've heard me say this a hundred times. They hate us. They hate us. They hate us. Well, too bad he didn't clean house. Well, yeah, I, exactly. Baron, thank you, Baron. I don't know that I would have remembered that. I, I, I have a feeling the Baron guy, Baron kid's a nice kid. I, I could be completely wrong. Oh, you play golf. Why don't you go with me, man, and we're, we're, when we go play with Will at the Fox? Think about that. We can talk about that off list. Look up Fox Ridge. A little bit of a drive for me. It's worth it. Will says there's great Chinese and great ice cream. So we're going to play early, and we're, then we're going to go have a Chinese lunch and ice cream, and then I'm driving back. That's where I am, dude. I'm I've only been in the 90s three, four or five times. I'm I'm like 105. I don't care what Will shoots. We don't care what Will shoots. If Will shoots 85, good for him. It doesn't matter. We because we, we got that's the beautiful part of the game. We're just handicapped. We might beat Will that day. <laughs> we when you factor in the handicap. <laughs> um, so yeah, why don't you come play golf with us? That'd be amazing. Keith, I uh, just got back. Trump's lawsuit foundation. That would be great. Um, yeah, exactly, Steve. You're exactly right. No, they hated him. They complete. They never estimated that he would win. They, you know, it, it, you know, it was. Um, uh, it's very interesting times we live in. But I'm telling you right now, all you have to do is think big. You got to think on a bigger scale, and you have to go through history. So we've been here before, not necessarily in the United States, but in other countries, bad people doing bad things. And God, I, I don't understand why he lets it happen or she, you know, I think 
Sometimes I think God's a woman. You know, I did a video about that. Have you ever seen my God is a woman video? Flipping hilarious. Oh, my God. I, you should read some of the comments under that video. Woo! <laughs> uh, 85 was normal last year. Blah, blah, blah. We don't want to hear about your 85. <laughs> 85, geez. You know, not even bogey golf. Um, but good for you. I mean, you know. Um, anyway, um, maybe 8-Bit can come and play with us. Wouldn't that be amazing? Um, anyway, so <laughs> I don't know what I was going to say. I just, uh, I just think, I just think that, um, history, we've, we've had bad people. I mean, look, Steve, in your own country and in France, look how abusive some of the Kings have been in your country and, 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 and Queens and, and the same thing in France. <laughs> and then eventually like, you know, just like a pinball machine, it tilts <laughs> game over. You restart, you know, so um, anyway, John's still here. Voting for bills two feet high. Yeah, that exactly. It's it, it, here's what bothers me, just so you know, John, about that. I always thought that the bills were supposed to be written by the legislators. They're not writing the bills. Somebody outside is writing it. Some lobbyist is writing the bill. It's not, it's not written by the people who sponsored it. Most of them are not bright enough. Yeah, wouldn't that be amazing? Yeah. Nancy passing the gavel to Trump. Uh, anyway, something. I just think some, first of all, the election this November, Steve, in America, it's going to be huge. People here in America are so upset at Brandon. Oh my gosh, it's horrible, man. I mean, it's it's horrible. It's horrible. And um it's going to it's going to be a I I'm going to stay up all night. I, I swear, I'm going to take I'm going to take a nap, drink five cups of coffee. I want to see those results come in. It's going to be it's going to be flipping amazing. And of course, what's going to really be cool is in the run-up, wait till you start to see again all the rallies that Trump will do in September and October. Oh my gosh. I don't know if you get to see those over in the UK. They're huge. They're, the rallies are huge. He's going to get so many people amped up. Yeah. All right. Okay. I'm going to get out of here two hours again. This is crazy. It feels like 10 minutes. Um very interesting live stream today. We didn't do a lot about cheap sheds. We went all over the place. Uh, John, best quote, I think up there was quoted by John. Jason, yeah, Jason Whitlock. What a smart man. Yeah, yeah. I heard him say that uh, last night on Tucker Carlson's show. Um, uh, Keith says, not sure if you're aware, but I think Rumble has a uh, live stream. Uh, oh, I'll look into that. Thank you. I think Kathy mentioned that to me. Um, yeah, it'd be interesting to try it out there to see if I, because uh, what I'm kind of disappointed about, um, I would have, I don't know why, I just, I, and I'm trying to pick really keyword rich titles, but I just, um, I would have thought by now I'd have 50 or 100 people tuning in. Never had that. Closest I think we've gotten, the biggest we've gotten is 35 people watching at once. So, be kind of neat to have a hundred or five hundred people watching. Um, all right, gonna go. Uh, thanks for being here today. Um, should be here tomorrow. I'll have all the clutter taken care of. Uh, not much more to do. Um, and um, let's see. <laughs> yeah, it's not how many voted, who counts the vote exactly, right? Just if you get depressed, if you get uh, discouraged, uh, you got to think big. You got to think big, and got to go back in history. And and you may not be religious. I happen to be. Um, it's a good versus evil thing, man. It's a good versus evil thing, and good always triumphs. As I said, I don't know why God lets the devil do his work. Sometimes I don't. 
Maybe it does it to wake people up. I, I don't quite get it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know that I'll ever know. Um, but we're going to prevail. The good good's not going to, this, it's going to prevail. No doubt about it. Okay, John, you're welcome. Um, the post idea is great. You know, you can use six by sixes uh, at the edge of the slab. Um, frame the walls so that the sheathing is flush with the outside of the pad. And then where each post is, that's going to be the bearing. You just got to go down 18 inches or so, pour a little concrete, you know, put a sauna tube in. And that's the cool thing. Here's the cool thing about that. You can put those cardboard sauna tube in. And so um, like three quarters of it is under the slab. And then you can make the concrete a little, uh, well, you can make it fair, somewhat stiff like I show as you're coming up. But right when you get to the top, the last little bit of concrete can be a little soupy, not too bad, but enough that it'll, it's kind of plastic and you can puddle it up underneath the slab. And for sure, it'll be underneath it right where you see it. But um, you'll be able to see that it's contacting the slab. That's all you need to do. You'll be in good shape. All right. Um, so 8-Bit, you got to go golfing with me when I go to Will's. I don't know when it's going to be yet. Probably it's going to be after the black flies. I know that. I want it to be a really nice day. I don't want it. I mean, I don't want it to be 90, but I want it to be really nice weather. So get in touch with me if you if you're interested. And where so you know where it is. Um, um <sighs> it's south of Augusta. Um, it's south of um I'll tell you where it is. It's it's exit 80. I'm sorry, exit 75 on um I-95 in Maine. So just look up exit 75. Uh, it's the town where Bates College is. I, why I can't rem remember it, I don't know. What a dumbass. Lewiston. Lewiston. Right around there. It's right in that area. So Auburn. Yes. Sorry about that. Auburn, Maine. So um, anyway, I've looked at the court. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be an awesome golf day. I can tell you that right now. Hole number five. <laughs> cannot wait. I cannot wait. Okay, I'm going to go. <laughs> All right. Tim Carter, Ask the Builder. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. Uh, sure appreciate it. Um, uh, and thanks for telling me what your superpowers are so I know who you are. So like Will, Will, superpower, golf, golf man. <laughs> so um, anyway, cannot wait. We're going to have a good time. Steve, thanks for being here today, buddy. Um, it's late for you, I know. Uh, 10 o'clock there, I think. Um, anyway, um, good stuff. Um, thanks for being here and hug your wife for me. Um, Vanessa, every, we, Keith, Steve Pawn, so many people, 8 bit vinyl, Keith, John, so many people today. I appreciate all your comments. You're the one who keeps the live stream going. So, all right. Good night, everybody. Uh, it's official here. Yeah, it's after six. <laughs> 85 is pretty good, Will. 85. I mean, most people would, hackers like me, just dream of that. We just dream of shooting in the 80s. That's a good score. It's a great score. All right. Good night, everybody. Will, thanks for being here. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, everyone. I can't remember all your names. Rocco, everybody. Thanks so much for being here. Vanessa, appreciate it. Um, I'll be here tomorrow. No doubt about it. I have lots of, I'm sure I have some good news. All right. Thanks very much. I'm Tim Carter. You've been watching Ask the Builder.